We're live in three, two. Absolutely. Are we live at this time of night? I don't know. Okay, so um, when this <laughs> when this session finishes, I will put it up on. I sent you a blog link. Um, so what I'll what I'll do is I'll I'll um, I'll put this video and every week's video. I'll do all of these every week, and I'll put them on a YouTube channel and then um, link that into the blog, which I will resend to. Okay, so I'll, I may not do that tonight because when it finishes, it takes a while to package, but I'll, I'll get it done by tomorrow if you need to, to, to reply to it. Okay. okay, so today's session really is a kind of um, uh, uh, how, how do you feel about how are things starting? Um, this is the session when you tell me all the stuff I've forgotten to put on Fronter. Um, this is the session when you tell me that you... Um, I've realised you've made a terrible mistake and you got your money back. Um, this is the session where you um, tell me about glitches and issues that you're having with Fronter as well. So really, it, it's a session led by you. Um, I think the only the only concrete thing that I would I would want you to come away with at the end of this session is feeling better about the upcoming. Um, the upcoming TP. Just before you know, you launch into into discussion on the TP. I would say that TP one is really not impossible to fail, but you've got to do something pretty drastically wrong to get it wrong in TP one. That's to say that TP one is. It's presumed that TP1 could be passed by somebody who's never stood in front of a group of students before. And then obviously as the TP progress, we expect your teaching to progress as well. So TP1 really is, can you manage to stand up in front of a group of students and not collapse, run away, kill yourself or one of them, or any, anything else that can go wrong uh, of that uh, uh, type. So really, it's not one for you to worry about. Yeah? Um, we've got a list of criteria for TP1, and it really is things like, you know, has two arms and legs, can breathe, uh, <laughs> manage not to make any, you know, hideous life-threatening comments to any of the students. It's not much more than that. So that's, that's the first thing to know. Don't worry too much about TP1. Um, worry about all the others, but don't worry too much. <laughs> Um, so my first question is, um, how is everybody feeling? Let's go around, starting with Michael. Feeling quite quite good so far, I think. It's now, especially after you said, um, not to worry too much about the first TV. <laughs> good, 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 good. That's what we want. Philip? Uh, yep, everything's uh, good so far. Feels good. Good, good, good. Antiana? It's good. Yeah, I like it a lot. Yeah. Good. Good. I will be quite busy <laughs> working on all of these things, but it's it, it, it's interesting. I, th I think I think now that you've touched on the the issue of being busy, um, it gets really intense the longer it goes on, and you'll find that you've got you've got the units to do. You've got the TP prep every week, and you've got assignments. And so, I really would, I really would emphasise the importance of time management. You know, nobody ever failed a CELTA who put enough time into it. People that don't get through it are people that you know just don't put the time in. So, it's really good that you're kind of recognising how how busy you will be. We've got a very good success rate, by the way. So. I, I want to continue that success rate. If I think you're going to fail, I'll just bully you off the course rather than fail you. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the only time people people don't get through the course is when they drop out. I never give up on anybody, and you know I've had tears, tantrums, all sorts of things over the years. But, but as long as you stick with with us, we will stick with you and make sure you get through the course, one way or another. Okay, next question. Um, tell me how it went with your little practice activities on Saturday 
and tell me one thing that you learned from the group that you think will be useful in your first TP. Let's start with Philip this time. Um, well, we only had four people in our group. Uh, it was a little chaotic that day, but I think by the end, we all had a pretty good sense of who the individual students were. Um, they became more uh, participatory, if that's the word, <laughs> um, as the, the class proceeded. So that's good. I was a little worried. They seemed a little quiet at the beginning. Only one student seemed to be answering all the questions. But um, after we did our interviews and everything like that, it uh, seemed pretty good. Um, to be honest, we didn't. I think Altiana was the only one who ended up really doing the practice teaching because when everybody came back from the bathroom, some people started with the interviews. Some people started correcting the letters that had been written. It just it kind of lost its control. And so, I mean, it wasn't so chaotic. But um, but so Altiana and I, I, I sort of watched her do hers at our table. She can talk more about that. But, um, but that went well. And uh, the students are very nice. And the interview went really well. I, I recorded it. I remembered uh, that, they, that you had re recommended recording it. So I recorded it, and the quality came out good. So I'm happy about that. I can go back and maybe take some notes. Uh, I actually, I found out that uh, Ju, she's married to your nephew, if I remember correctly. My nephew is my niece, indeed, yes. Yes, yes, yes. So, yeah, so she's very nice. It was a nice interview. So, good. yeah. Good, good. Um, with respect to, to that group of students, my wife is the chief recruiter, and she has been busy on the phone this week, um, rustling up some more intermediate. So, we will be sending you one, possibly two from the from the other level, uh, they will be weaker, but as I discussed with Michael, it's very, very difficult, impossible in fact, to students all at the same level, and we do rely on the, the community's good graces. Um, we've tried all sorts of ways of recruiting students, including using um, the Electrolux cleaners, and then we found out that they can't read and write, so that created a whole bunch of problems and um, we decided not to use them again. We've used um, local Emirati students and um, yeah, let's move on. And so the, we found that the, the best option um, was this kind of, the, the, was to use the Latino community just because on a Saturday morning when you've had a tough week at work, it's much nicer to look at 15 smiling Latino ladies um, who are all happy to be there and enthusiastic than it is to, um, you know, look at a bunch of miserable faces, basically. So we, we just, we go with this, we go with this because they're the happiest students we can find and it's nice to be happy on a Saturday. Um, you will have, I am guessing, uh, around eight on Saturday. I would like you to be, be prepared for anything up to 12. And I accept my apologies that, you know, that, that we had a slow start with the intermediate group. Um, but there will, there will be more this coming Saturday, and you do need to be prepared for that. Um, the group will settle down around TP3. So you, you generally find, you know, there'll be a lot of the people will go away and they'll say, oh, this is free English class. And they'll call people and say, oh, you must come along. More people will come along. A few of them that came won't come back. There'll be a bunch of new people. They'll stay this week. And, you know, then a couple will drop out for the next TP and then a couple more will drop out. And then we'll end up more or less in our stable number. And again, there's, there's just nothing you can do about that. That's just the way that this works in Celta. Okay. So thanks for that uh, feedback. Altiana, tell us how your practice activity went and what you learned for your upcoming TP? Um, we were working on some questions. Um, actually, I prepared 30 of them, but we, um, we didn't have enough time. Um, the students answered uh, only on four of them. So I just wanted to get the feeling um, what they're interested in, um, uh, to feel um, how's this level, how to work with them in future. Uh, I 
I find them very friendly and uh, enthusiastic, and um, I think will it will be fine uh, for the will be fine. Um, the only thing I was wondering, as I was working on my TP one uh, last night, and I was wondering uh, um, how to organize them in groups and pairs, and how many people uh, I, I can expect. Um, so it's good you give us this information uh, um, about the class itself. For, for me, the most important thing was to, to have a, a normal, relaxed conversation with them and uh, um, to know what, what their needs are. Um, from my own experience, I know that the best way to, uh, 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 to know them at the beginning is to give them some kind of test or uh, a, a dictation or something. This is what I do with my students, um, but in, in, in this case, it will be different. So I have to discover, I have to keep discovering with time uh, what are their uh, strong and weak points. So it was fine. Uh, I was happy uh, with them. Uh, 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 they were talkative, they were involved, uh, so I can feel relaxed with them and for me that was the most important point i, th I think that I, th I think actually that's probably one of the, the most important points that you've touched on is this especially at the beginning is this feeling of, of you being relaxed and your students being relaxed it, it, it really is what, uh, there's this thing called the affective filter and the affective filter basically is the the way that you feel. Sorry, can I just ask you to, when I'm speaking, if you just mute, that would improve the quality of everybody. We're again, oh, no, there's nothing worse than hearing your own voice. Mm -hmm. Thanks. So, um, yeah, um, this thing of the affective filter basically states that your language level improves if you feel relaxed and able to take risks. And your language level degenerates, and that includes levels of comprehension, levels of output, if you feel uncomfortable. And I've seen evidence of this. My wife can go from a C, C1, near native level of English, to um, pre-intermediate, according to the person that she's speaking to. And, and, and there are a couple of people who make her feel uncomfortable, and, and it's incredible to see how much her language collapses uh, in the face of that. So I think this, this issue of the affective filtering, if you can make them feel comfortable, and I think you'll only make them feel comfortable if you feel comfortable, and you'll only feel comfortable yourself if you are honest with yourself and honest with them. And that means things like don't bullshit them. So if you don't know the answer to something, say, God, I don't know. Let's figure that out together. Or, God, that's an interesting question. Do any of you know? Because I don't. And being absolutely honest about your own limitations because we're not encyclopedias, we're not Google, and we're humans interacting with other humans. So, you know, I'm really glad that you brought that up. The other issue that, I'm, and then I'll take comments in a second. The other issue that I'd like to raise is, is this issue of groups. Um, that you raised up again. And, and this was a question that came from one of the forums, I think from Michael, um, about whether to mix groups up every lesson or not. And my response in the, in the forum is uh, the response that I'll give now. I think it's good to let students have their seats and I think it's good to let them have their, you know, their own spot and they come in, they sit with who they're comfortable with during the lesson um, but I think every lesson needs a variety of interaction patterns so let's say Honju sits next to Maria and that's her regular spot okay let Honju come in and sit next to Maria but then when you do a pair group activity you, you make Honju work with Jose and you and you and you mix them up so I think I think that's the response there you know 
do let them be comfortable, do let them have their own spot so they're not wondering where to sit every week. But then you want a variety of pair work um, during the during the lesson. Okay. Thanks for that, Aldiana. Michael, um, you're the only one that hasn't fed back. If there are any comments about my comments about groups or whatever, uh, anybody feel free to yeah. Yeah, I think it went, <clears throat> the game went okay. I did a little game with the um, with the group. Um, I think it may have been some of the instructions I gave were too too complicated. I think, as you mentioned, some of them are like really basic level, but demonstrating it really did help out there. And the sort of once I started, just sort of started doing it and asking people to do very simple things, which sort of were part of the game. They they really got it, and after like the second round, everybody was on board. Um, I think that'll be useful in future choosing activities or games like that. I'll always go for something that's closer to their level. This may have been a bit too, it would have, was a bit more complicated to take it to, to the next level, to um, bringing in new rules or talking about, it was like a little word, word creation game, talking about tactics or two teams and things like that. That wasn't really possible. Um, Something I think I learned, which is useful, is if, was interesting. The game was pitting two sides of the class against each other, sort of to see who could compete the word the first. And um, they were got quite enthusiastic and, the, and spoke among one another, but never felt like they were getting out of control. Or um, yeah, it was easy to get them quiet again and get them focused on what's happening. And I thought it's, it's I guess, not a massive group, but it's not just you know five people. So. I, but there may be, it could be difficult, I guess, depending on students to sort of keep control of a big group when you're asking them to work in, in groups, separate groups. I just... Okay, okay. I'll, I'll pick up on a couple of those points, if I may. I'll take the last, the last issue first, which is the issue of uh, control and noise, and then, I, and then I'll, I'll, I'll talk about instruction giving. Um, I, think, I think knowing as I do that type of student, I don't think you'll ever have any kind of discipline issue. If they're noisy, then that's got to be a good thing. Um, if they're noisy, it's because they're engaged and they're enjoying it. And if they're quiet, that's when you need to, that's when you need to worry. When, when, when Latinas go quiet, look over your shoulder because something bad is about to happen. Um, so yeah, don't, 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 don't worry about them being rowdy. Um, let them be rowdy and keep a smile on your face and they'll keep their smile on their faces. I think th that group's biggest issue actually is going to be what one woman said to me in Spanish, teacher, please don't make me speak in front of the class because I don't feel able to. I like to analyze things before I speak. And I, I said to her in Spanish, absolutely fine, don't worry. So I think, you, I think your biggest challenge is actually going to be that some of these women have never spoken in English in public. And what you're asking them to do is a big ask. So be sensitive to that and, and, and be, you know, you've really got to pick up when they're not comfortable speaking and don't force them into it. And I think that's one of the big, I think that's one of the big traps that we can fall into. But we think that learning only takes place when a student's talking to, to the whole group. It's this idea, of, I can measure your learning because you're speaking to me. And if you're not speaking, it must mean you're not learning. When actual, actually, I think there are students who like to, to reflect before they speak. There are students who are happy speaking in a pair, but don't want to speak in a group. So make sure that there are lots of pair activities. And, and uh, you know, I think there are, there, there are, there are students, and this is you know, evidence-based, that, that simply learn by listening and will then go away and process, and then we'll go back and produce. And that's actually one of the criticisms of the direct method. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just thinking that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. forces mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So, so I think that's that point, and you know, slight side issue. Uh, the issue that you raised with instruction giving is probably the single most problematic issue, especially at lower levels. I'm going to explain something now, and I'd like you to tell me what I'm explaining. You play this with with two two or more people um, you need a pack of cards just regular playing cards in fact you could use any type of, of cards they could be the 
you know, like the, the, the playing cards, the Western playing cards, but also the Spanish ones, you know, with a copper and a spada and all that, it's up to you. And basically, you distribute the cards amongst the players, and each player turns over a card. And what you have to do is look for two players who've got the same card at the same time. And when that happens, the first player who can put his or her hand over the card and shout, and in fact, the word that you would shout is snap, is the winner of that particular hand. And then, of course, the, the, the winner, the overall winner of the game is the person that can win all the cards in the deck. Okay. What, what did I just explain? How to play a card game, but it'd be quite difficult for a low-level group to right. get so most of it. You know the name of the game? I, snap. I didn't, snap. Maybe Snap. Yeah. If you wanted to teach somebody how to play Snap, what would you do? Show them. Just play a round. You'd have a round of Snap. That is your... I want you to think about, before you explain anything, I want you to think. Am I doing the snap rule? Mm -hmm. And that means whatever the game is, whatever the drill is, whatever the, the task is, you simply do an example with absolutely no instruction needed. Yeah. So whatever it is, you just do it with a strong student and then you just go. There you go. Mm -hmm. Off you go. Mm -hmm. And people will just copy what you did. You know, very easy to say, very easy in theory, very difficult to get used to doing in practice because we are so completely drilled into explaining things to people. Mm -hmm. yeah. So model, model, model. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, any questions or comments before we move on? Um, I have a question about the um, interview, but I don't know. Now would be time to raise it or later. Yeah, no, raise it away. Um, the um, student I interviewed, she had very little little English, so she wasn't really capable of answering anything beyond yes or no. And even then, like she didn't understand why. Right. She didn't understand. So I have very very little in terms of answers. Okay. And do I go with that and build on that for the assignment? Do I interview someone new? on Saturday is maybe capable of giving me It's some your time. shout. I mean, whatever's going to be make, whatever's going to make it easier for you. If you want, um, if you want her there and you want to grab somebody from an inter, from the intermediate and help them translate, that's fine as well. Okay. You know, so just go in and, and a couple of those guys, you know, probably reasonably strong intermediates and just say, can you help me out? And, 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 record, and record the translations. I mean, if, if I've got time, I can help myself. Um, but you know, normally it's fairly limited for time, and normally we kind of we, we we try to get the students out as quickly as possible so we can uh, pass verdict on the TP. And she was also in the class that only she was the um, Arabic speaker, so I think. That... Oh, Randa, you were talking about Randa. Yes. Um, the easiest, if you wanted to redo it with Randa, um, let me know. And uh, she's actually a. Her uh, husband is an old friend of mine. Um, so, again, if you wanted to redo it with her, then um, let me know and I'll call Mohammed and I'll ask um, him to translate for you. Okay. Okay. Right. Or choose somebody else who's a Spanish speaker. Might be easier. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. I mean, in, in the case of Randa, actually, I mean, I could. I can even, if you want, I can even, I can give you Mohammed's phone number and you can call him if you want to do it, that's fine as well. Um, let me know on our Facebook in and I'll just say, look, you know, this guy's going to call. He's got some questions for Randa, which she couldn't understand. Um, and you can do it on the phone as well, that's fine. Okay. Just Good. have a think about it, send me an email. Or whatever. Yeah, so I ended up with some of the last questions was using um, Google Translate and yeah. showing it to Charles, she couldn't understand, but she couldn't really... There's no way there to respond at the end of the day. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's, it's your show. If you want to do it over the phone, let me know, and I'll Facebook Mohammed and I'll send you his number. Um, if you want to choose somebody else, that's fine. Okay, or, um, okay. I'll let you know. Thanks. Okay. Any more questions or issues before we move on? Uh, I have one about the website, but I'm just kind of waiting to hear for a question about website. Or... Okay, ask away then. Let's let's get let's get the website ball rolling. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm not sure if it's my. I have a MacBook Pro, um, but a couple times now I've posted into the forum, 
and immediately after I can see what I've posted. And then if I go back one minute later, it's gone. It seems to disappear <clears throat> and I can't seem to find it again. So okay, dokie, let's have a look. Let me just share the screen. Okay, so here we are. Ah, cool. Let's have a look at, um, I don't know, let's have a look at unit one. Mm -hmm. Show you. So you should, you should see your name there, but then if you've, if you've made a comment, uh -huh. for example, if, you know, if I've made a comment on, on your initial post, then you won't see that. So if you click here, mm -hmm. there's the there's your original post and there's the reply. Okay. Is it an issue like that, or is it you don't it's, see your name here at all? No, I yeah I do. It's kind of inconsistent uh, actually because like for example I did see your reply to my lead in. Um, well, so for unit four, when I actually asked those two questions, after I asked them, I went back just to see if if they were there and then I couldn't retrieve them again. So I thought, well, maybe it's built that way that they disappear until you respond and then they show up again or something. No, 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 you should be, you should be, sorry. should be there. Okay, I'll keep. Yeah. Hang on a minute, just, I've got yeah. to stop the share because it's, uh -huh. the way the buttons work, hang on a minute. Just do that, I'll go into, I'll go into unit four and let's see what it looks like. Right. Okay, let's have a look. Okay, so here's unit four. Mm -hmm. and I can see this and then I click on the plus oh, okay maybe it's the plus thing yeah it's okay. you know what you know I'm recording and all that but I'm going to say yeah. front of socks okay <laughs> um, the content of the course is great I think it's really complete and I think it's as enriching as a face-to-face -face course, but I think the interface is poor. Okay. So something from 20 years ago. <laughs> yeah, almost, yeah. I mean, the forum especially, I like all the class and it's just yeah, not very intuitive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a shame. I mean, I used to work for Cambridge University Press, so I know them very well, and, and it, they are literally run by old men with tweed jackets with leather patches <laughs> um, and, and it's all very jolly hockey sticks and they, <laughs> they've got the best minds in in language teaching and learning and the best writers mm. but they are a big slow old ship to turn around mm. um, they only they only adopted fronter they adopted fronter when i worked for them which was um about 10 years ago and um, to hear them talk about it, it was like absolutely the most cutting edge thing going. So it's probably going to take mm -hmm. another 10 years before they realize it was out of bounds before they even started. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, great. I'll try that when I get home, the plus and minus thing. Please, 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 click, click the, the plus and minus. Okay, great. Thank you. I also have a website question. Um, when we um, like complete a page in one of the units and move to the next one, does, um, it seems to clear, you can save your, if you put something in the text box and you click save and it downloads it to your screen, but it doesn't seem to keep it in front as such. So if I go back to like, you know, one mm -hmm. I did a few, a few days ago, everything will be empty. Is that a problem or something, you know, when I want to work through something again, does it think I haven't completed it yet? Does it keep a record of what, what I've done? Let's have a look at your, um, just a bit I'm afraid because it's, I asked Tim something similar. He said that those are actually for us. Is that true? That when you save the text, yeah, that's really for you. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. but is it also submitted? Like, I mean, if I want to go and change something later, is that okay? Just, yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is not assessed. All we would do is look at the statistics. Okay. okay. And let's have a look at. Um, oh, hang on. Let's have a look at what you're, and you can tell how often I do this. I can't remember the pathway. Let's, have a look. let's see what Michael's done. And let's see what Michael's done. When did the course start? 24th of March. Today. 
Let's click everything and see what happens. Not a lot. Okay, so that's what, would you say that's an accurate reflection of what you've done? Uh, yeah, uh, unit one and two should be 100%. I don't know why it's showing 94, but yeah. As I'm not sure, like, I'm just wondering how, if I go into it. Um, yeah, and then it says everything's completed. Everything's <laughs> 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 completed, so okay. <laughs> okay, that's strange. Okay. I mean, I think so. What I what I would do is at the end of the course, um, and yeah, you know, once or twice during the course, when I remember when somebody like you brings it up, um, which people always do, I'll I'll just have a quick click and see what people have been doing. And as long as you don't see, you know, sort of zero twenties, <laughs> you just move on. I mean, it's okay. you know, it's you. It's all about the TPs and it's all about the assignments. Okay. Mm -hmm. I thought um, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and you, you'll only really get this flagged up if you're obviously not doing anything. So that looks fine. Okay. Any more questions? Uh, just for Michael, I had 94% a couple of times too. I just had to go back and like keep hitting next even though there was the last page if you hit okay. next yeah and like the upper left hand corner it, then it finally says okay you finished the course yeah there must be some missing page or something that gets counted yeah even if you're at the last page or something it's like you have to say next page even though there isn't a next page and okay. then it yeah somehow it goes okay. to hundred percent yeah thanks sure okay good tip thanks for that. But yeah, don't, don't worry too much about that you know just if it's uh, if it's over 60 or 70 percent we're, we're, we're about it um, I also sent you a link to a blog with lots of reading links. Um, we'll start with uh, Michael and then I'll Yana and then Philip. Could you share with us something that you've read? Um, I can't remember the name now. It's on my, I downloaded them so they're on, not on my um, laptop. But the one that was um, about um, learning, I think learning teaching, it's called. Yeah, the screen, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, just it was quite interesting, sort of thinking about teaching on its own, not like specifically teaching English. And um, I think something which I found interesting was how everyone brings their own sort of experiences about what you know what a teaching environment is based on what they experienced back in school, and that can sort of shape whether they you know coming to it with a positive or negative I think attitude. So I was just thinking that I was wondering what we could do to sort of, I don't know, create an environment or take an approach which would sort of show people who have had very negative experiences, maybe, you know, high school is a disaster, teachers are horrible people, <laughs> sort of changing the mindset to, you know, the, they're learning, but I mean, even looking at all the methodology in that book and some of the other books, it's nothing like what I would associate back with the way I was taught back in school. It's very different and much nicer, I'd say. Um, this is just something they'll just sort of pick up on, I think, through going through through the course, seeing that it's different, or is there something we can, like something concerted sort of say something about this isn't going to be <laughs> what you're used to or it's just once again by a sort of demonstration that they will get that. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting question, isn't it? I mean, I think we kind of touched on this a bit earlier. I, I, I think I, I personally, I, I'd, I'd like to hear your, your comments as well, but I think a big one for me is that, you know, don't, don't be afraid of making yourself look like an ass. Um, because when you, I think when you show students that you're not afraid of your own sense of ridiculousness, it gives them courage. Mm. Uh, and then I think I think you're right. Lead by example, you know. And I, th I think another another good little tip is is always say things like, oh, "When I try to learn Spanish, you know, I wish I could speak Spanish, and I've studied it." And also make them realise that you can be a student as well. And I think that kind of. That kind of okay. Anybody got any other tips? Sorry, I 
Um, I would like to say something. Uh, as you give us a lot of books for uh, to prepare to read, to, to explore. Um, I was reading uh, a, a, lear a learning teaching and uh, I just reviewed others. And then I realized that um, the best way to read these books is to focus on a certain thing. So um, maybe the best way is uh, 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 to, uh, to work on uh, assignments and read, uh, a search for uh, 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 particular things. Because um, it's, it does make sense to uh, read them at once because um, everything will be mixed up, everything will be uh, in a chaos. For me, it's easier uh, 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 to have uh, uh, to organize it uh, with this, uh, to organize it in small sections. This is how I read, and uh, I realize some books are better, some are not. And so far, I found one uh, which which really helps. Um, uh, it's just, it, it was like, um, for me, this, I, I forgot the name, I'm sorry, uh, but it was revealing completely new things that I have never heard of. Okay, I wonder, I wonder which one that was, I mean, let's just say there's a number of books on there. Um, maybe it was uh, Michael Lewis doing the verb, that one could be quite a revelation for people. That's not the cover, so doing this verb on it. Anyway, anyway. Um, yeah, let, let me take that comment. I, I think you're absolutely right. I think, you know, all, all, all of the books there that you need for your assignments. So whenever you do an assignment, there's no need really to go anywhere else. There's enough books on that blog for you to be able to find what you need. I think, I think also looking at, 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 you know, an aspect like classroom management and then seeing what the difference you've got to say is also a really interesting approach. I also think we read differently. I think everybody is different. And I also think that some of those books, I'm quite happy to, to read as better than reading. And, 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 and they're just kind of things that rumble on in the background. And then there are other books which are a bit denser, um, which perhaps I'd come to with a more specific question. I think, that, I think that if you can read The Scrivener, that is one of the key texts for many, many CELTA courses. And you should actually find that um, both the Scrivener and the language teaching by Jeremy Harmer dovetail or match very closely with the ideas in the course. Okay. So they, they are really good courses. So that's a comment from Michael and Aldiana. Um, anything you'd like to comment from your reading? Um, well, to be honest, I've only started skimming through them. Uh, I was just curious to see what they were like. And I've mostly been just focusing on the units. <clears throat> and when I looked at the assignment, I saw that we have to reference, or sorry, uh, when we, after the interview of the student, we need to reference some of the books in terms of, like a, I felt like it's sort of like a doctor diagnosis in a thing, in a sense, right? So, um, so I was seeing them as more of a reference material, but it, should we be more actively reading them? Is that part of the, I wasn't sure if it's part of the instruction or they were reference materials, I guess. Okay, I, I think, yeah, I, I, I think you can get away without doing any reading at all and still pass the course and still do fine on the course. I think that, I think that the, the participants who read a lot are the participants who are more likely to get above standard. Okay. I think, I think the, 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 the participants who read a lot uh, are more likely just simply to get a richer picture. I also mm -hmm. think you can go back and do this reading when the course is finished. Um, you know, I, I feel that this has been a weakness of mine as a tutor to not emphasize the reading enough, which is why I've tried to give it a bit more emphasis on this particular course. In the past, I've kind of said, there's some reading, you know, if you want. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but then I made the effort recently to put it all on, a, on, on the blog and make it easily available. And, and I, I, I kind of think myself that it, it really is the difference between, um, you know, doing, doing what you need to pass the course and getting everything you can out of the course. 
Okay. Uh, for example, I just wrote down those two, uh, the Scrivener and the Harmer. You said those are two pretty good reads yeah, out of all I mean, of them. They're two, they're, they're uh, two, you know, you, you'll find on 90% on of CELTA courses around the world will include one of okay. the core texts. Mm. But, but really, I mean, everything, everything I've included on the reading list is interesting. Okay. Um, also, I found myself, um, I ended up, I think, is it the London House? Is that the main CELTA website or... Maybe it's not London House, but I ended up finding International House. They're a big yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. So I was like going through there, reading some of their articles, some of the listening to some of the teachers there speak about things as well. Just yeah, there's, I mean, there's looking at blogs there's, and there's, stuff. Yeah, there's a load of extra stuff. The only thing I would say in defense of my choice of reading is it's all good core texts okay. and reputable. So don't get lost in too many Facebook groups or too many. Yeah. Articles that, you know, that, that most of them are probably valid, but as, as time pressure mounts, then I would try and put all your efforts into the units, TPs, the assignments, and the, and, and the reading that I've sent you. Just, just okay. Just okay, I'll start with those two and see how they go. Okay, yeah. That's good. Yeah, great, I, I thanks. I think that they complement the course very well. Okay, great. Okay. Um, I, I, I thought we'd... We'll probably only go on for another five minutes or so, but I, I thought I'd, I'd pick up on a point of yours, Philip, actually, in the, in the Q&A, which touched a bit of a nerve with me, which was um, you used the, the phrase CELTA method. And, uh -huh. and, 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 and I, I, thought it would, I thought it would be an interesting to discussion to, um, to, to talk a little bit about what makes a method a method and what makes an approach an approach. Mm. So, um, I'm going to ask you to uh, organize a dinner party at the end of the course, and I want you to tell me how you are going to decide on what you will cook. Philip, how would you decide on what you will cook? Uh, I would interview all the people that are coming and ask them what their favorite foods are and then try to find something where the I, majority I, of the people. I like Italian. Um, I like pasta dishes. Uh, Diana, what about you? <laughs> I'm not quite sure. <laughs> uh, I'm a terrible cook. <laughs> well, you don't have to cook. You just have to eat. <laughs> Tell me about the cuisine that you like. Um... I like fresh food. Fresh food, okay, yeah, me too. Yeah, Michael? As a South African, I have to say something with lots of meat. <laughs> Some barbecue. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So you've got, it has to be fresh, and uh, we've got some pasta and some meat. So tell us, tell us what's on the menu. Uh, I'm going to have a barbecue ribs with a pasta salad and um, some fresh vegetables. Mm, sounds good. <laughs> right now you need to decide how are you going to cook it how are you going to know how to cook it what are you going to do um how i'm going to prepare it yeah i mean tell us how you're going to find out how to barbecue the ribs how to make the pasta salad and, and how to prepare the fresh vegetables uh probably go to google try to find a website that offers uh recipes or maybe watch a youtube video Okay. Do some so research. You find, you find a recipe on how to barbecue ribs, and it tells you how to, you know, how to um, marinate the ribs and everything. Will you, mm. will you follow? Will you follow what it says step by step, or will you riff on it in your own style? Uh, I'm the type of person I will I will follow it step by step. I don't get too creative. I just follow the rules. Okay. So, um, what's a method? What's an approach? I'd say the method is uh, following the instructions. Points one, two, three, four. That's the method of like barbecuing, let's say. And the approach is maybe the initial part. Um, I mean, approaching the student, I guess, the interaction itself. We're barbecuing ribs, but not, there's no students. Oh, okay. <laughs> I would approach the ribs. <laughs> how would you approach them and ask them how they would like to be cooked? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> I don't know. I think I think I think Philip's got 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 the, the method. Mm -hmm. where the method will say here is the recipe for cooking ribs, but I don't think he's really got to grips with the approach. Mm -hmm. Anybody help? <laughs> I thought of the approach in terms of how you. I'm going to 
say, approach that you try to ask, it's sort of thinking you want to do a dinner and you want your approach is you want to do something that can that to make something that appeals to the broadest you know. So what's a, what's an approach? The biggest possible group of you're the meat expert. What's the what's what's a good approach rather than a than a method? What's a good approach to pick a group? Ah, okay. Can I jump in or still Michael? Okay, so maybe the method is just following rules or guidelines, instructions, but an approach would be like maybe common sense and just paying attention to the ribs. Um, like a little bit more organic or something, like watching the meat, seeing how brown it gets, yeah, I think putting I, some I think sauce. That, I, think, I think that's part of the approach, yeah. Mm -hmm. Kind of knowing when the meat's brown enough, yes. Mm -hmm. part mm -hmm. of it. What, mm -hmm. else is, what else is a good approach when you're cooking ribs? It's not necessarily a recipe. I think it's it's important to be creative. Uh, it's good to know the recipe, but you don't need you don't. It's not a must to follow it blindly. So I think it's always a good idea to to to, to add some um, something new, like a spice. Yeah, I think actually, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking about that. In the marinade, I, I think that there's some good honey in the UAE. So I definitely include some of that honey. And, and saffron's quite cheap here. So I'm wondering, like, a saffron honey marinade might be cool. I'm, you can tell I'm hungry, right? I'm really <laughs> I was going to say I'm getting hungry. <laughs> like a, a marinade honey, a marinade saffron would be good. So yeah, I think that's part of an approach as well. I'll put everyone out there misery because I'm going to go home and eat. <laughs> um, an approach is underlying rules that you would do no matter what the recipe. Cook it well. Well, I mean, not no, 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 rules. No, no, if it's pork ribs, make sure the damn things are cooked properly. Uh -huh. No matter what the recipe is, that's your underlying approach for successful ribs. Um, another a, a part of an approach, whatever the marinade make sure that you marinate well in advance so that the marinade has got time to soak into the meat. Um, that's part of an approach, no matter what the recipe. Mm -hmm. You're going to cook the coals, make sure that the coals have been lit for a good period of time before you start cooking. Mm -hmm. You know, again, no matter what the recipe, that's part of the approach. And that's the difference between an approach and a method in language teaching. Berlitz will say, First, model, uh, and then uh, drill, and then do some production, right? PPP, mm -hmm. that's, yeah. uh -huh. that's what you have to do. Mm -hmm. uh, a communicative approach just says this. You get the best results from plenty of meaningful practice, from allowing the students to develop the language themselves, and by allowing the students to communicate, you are allowing them to learn. And the act of communication is the act of acquisition. Mm -hmm. Now that's not the same as a recipe. Mm. There are many different ways of allowing students to communicate or encouraging students to communicate or setting up the conditions under which communication can flourish. There are many different ways of, of, of practicing. But if they've got that common thread that it's communication where the language learning takes place mm -hmm. then they fall under the communicative approach mm -hmm. and that's why there's no such thing as a CELTA approach CELTA advocates communicative language teaching communicative language teaching doesn't even tell you what to teach and there are some communicative practitioners that say that collocation should be at the forefront vocabulary short lexis should be at the forefront Grammar should be at the forefront. Notions and functions should be at the forefront. But and you could choose any of those, and it could still be communicative. Mm -hmm. So you could say, well, I actually think that it should be functions, how to do things, like how to buy, how to buy the ribs in the supermarket. Mm -hmm. Or it could be grammatical. It could be um, asking you know, polite requests using can or may. Or it could be lexical. So I, might, I may take um, May and Canna's words, and, and that would be my starting point. It may be chunking, may I have, can I have. All of these are valid. But the point is, in order for that student to learn, he's going to have to use that target language in a meaningful context 
that allows him to use it and therefore acquire it. Mm -hmm. And that's a communicative approach. Stephen Krashen, is he the one that kind of coined that, or is, no, is it not, not necessarily? Krashen okay. was communicative, uh, but Krashen uh, said this. Krashen said that in order for people to learn a language, they don't need to look at the language um, explicitly. It's enough for them to be able to practice the language in a meaningful context without actually, you know, saying, well, where's the verb, where's the adjective, how do they fit together? It's enough for me to be able to use the language. And that was what he called the natural approach. And he was absolutely right. And, and you know, and, 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 and research bears this out, that if you allow students to practice and give them loads and loads of meaningful practice, they will develop into fluent speakers of English. Yes. Where Krashen got it wrong was that in, in, uh, in his approach, the students become very fluent speakers. I mean, and they can deal with lots of communicative context. But they're not very accurate speakers mm -hmm. because no one's ever said, oh, hang on a minute. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't say, may I can have. You just mm -hmm. need to say, may I have or can I have? Mm -hmm. And because there's no error correction, um, mm -hmm. you know, errors fossilize and students end up. A typical crashing student, you know, when people go to live, it's, it's what you might call your immigrant profile. So you get Spanish speakers who go to the US, Mexican Americans, they can live in the US 40 years and they still make all these god awful mistakes. And people, you know, you've lived yeah. in the US for 40 years. Why are you saying, you know, mm -hmm. it likes me a sport? Well, it's because no one's ever corrected it. Mm -hmm. And that, that was where crashing kind of went wrong. But yeah, mm -hmm. crashing is still communicative. But of course, being communicative, you can actually, you can still have all that rich input and you can all that practice, but combine it with, taking 10 minutes in the lesson to actually look at error and give and give students feedback or, or, or to have some explicit focus on forms and focus on grammar, which will allow students to notice um, where their errors are. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't know if it's accurate or not, but I think for me, maybe that's something that I will learn or think about during this course because a lot of times students tell me, oh, wow, you correct me. A lot of the teachers don't correct as much as you do. And... So, and then when I was watching some of the videos, I know I haven't seen many of them, but it didn't seem like a lot of correction was happening. I thought, well, maybe, you know, I, I understood oh, that stop, as well, stop, but. Stop, sorry, stop, stop. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm just, I just want to jump in there. Sure. Is that okay with you? <laughs> of course. You feel okay about that? You sure? <laughs> no, yes, Jonathan. Thanks for shoulders so that I just interrupted you. Sorry? You know, Does it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've just interrupted you. E yeah, right, right. Yeah, okay. I see. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so you want to make them comfortable and. Yes. I mean, yeah. absolutely correction. Well, in fact, error is absolutely central to learning. Mm -hmm. When a student makes an error, it's evidence that the student is learning. Mm -hmm. it's okay. Evidence that the student is trying to get out of, is trying to push the envelope. Mm -hmm. The student that never makes an error is either somebody who shouldn't be in a language class because they're a native speaker, or it's somebody who's staying within their comfort zone. And learning mm -hmm. only takes place when you try to push yourself a little bit harder. I, mm -hmm. I, I sometimes use a gym analogy for that. It would be like going to the gym, picking up the five pound weight and just practicing, you know, just lifting the five pound weight. You're never going to get big muscles that way. You mm -hmm. need to go to a five pound weight and then move up to a 10 pound weight, etc. So in terms of second language acquisition, um, the argument is that error is evidence of students trying and um, it's evidence of where students are with their language. And it's absolutely essential to address it. The only issue is when you address it. Now, in the, in the Berlitz or the direct method, the Inlingua method, you are told that you should stop the student and correct. The idea being, and, th and this comes from behaviorism, you know, mm -hmm. this is Pavlov's dog, mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you, you know, the, the, yeah. you, 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 you give it a positive stimulus or the negative stimulus. <laughs> and that's basically what the Berlitz method says. Mm -hmm. What we would argue for is that the issue is that is you make people feel self-conscious about making error. Mm -hmm. And that's what you don't want. Mm -hmm. You want people to feel absolutely brilliant about making error. And whenever they mm -hmm. make an error, it gives them cause to jump up and say, yeah, I made a mistake. Now I can learn something. 
Mm -hmm. So when you correct the error is almost as important as how you correct it. And, and I would argue that the error correction must come when the student at least has finished his or her turn. And it's actually more beneficial if you're doing a, you know, a, a more productive type activity. So you're doing a scenario, I want you to go to the supermarket and buy some ribs, you're the butcher, you're the customer. Wait until the ribs have been bought. Mm -hmm. wait, until, wait until the, 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 the production has been completed. Then say, oh, do you know when you said may, may, can I have? Well, does that look okay to you? Is there any way we could change it? Okay, we've changed it. Now, if we've got time, wouldn't it be great to do that activity again and see if the students can then self-correct? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Great. Thank so you. It's, really, it's, it's really looking at the error once the students have finished and, and you're allowing them to then focus and say, okay, well, I made a mistake there. You know, I made, a, I made an error. Let me think about that. And maybe next time, you know, I'll, I'll be able to address it. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. Helpful. Mm -hmm. It's 8.01. I'm going home. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, if you've got any issues or questions, especially Michael um, or anybody who's watching this who's in my group, that's uh, Shan and um, Iris. Iris, give me a call. You've got my number. If you're in Tim's group, please get in touch with him. Um, if you've got any emergencies, anything you're really panicking about, do feel free to, to let me know as well. I will do most of these online sessions and I'll do most of the moderating. Um, so please don't feel shy about saying, hey, John, where's my comment? I posted ages ago and you haven't commented or how do I do this? Help me and, and I'll help. Okay. Great. Great. Thanks a lot for your time. And Thank you. See you all. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.